Now it's time for us to take a look at a couple of radical equations that are a bit more complicated than the ones we saw in the last video. Starting with this one, 7 plus 4 times the cube root of 5x minus 1 equals negative 17. So the order for solving a radical equation is to get the radical by itself first. Please remember this, the 7 and the 4 do not add. If you say 7 plus 4 right now, all bets are off, you're, you're just wrong. The 4 is connected to the radical through multiplication. The 7 is not really connected. So the first order of business is to move the 7 to the other side. So let's subtract 7 on both sides, like this. We now have 4 times the cube root of 5x minus 1 is equal to negative 24. Now, I know some people may want to try to go ahead and cube both sides because of the cube root, but you really should get rid of that coefficient first. So we can undo that by dividing both sides of the equation by 4. And so now we have the cube root of 5x minus 1 is equal to negative 6. To undo the cube root, this is where we can finally apply that power property. Raise both sides of the equation to a power that matches the index. So I'm going to raise both sides to the third power, just like that. Well, that gives me 5x minus 1. And on the right side, negative 6 to the third is negative 216. And at this point, it's just a nice, simple, linear equation for us to solve. So now we just add 1 to both sides, and then we divide by 5. So 5x is equal to negative 215. Divide both sides of the equation by 5. And x is equal to negative... 43. And it really shouldn't be much of, a, of an exercise to plug negative 43 back in here and check. The radicals where you really need to check are the radicals that have an even root, that have an even uh, index. Uh, things like the cube root, once you solve for this, everything should be fine. We really shouldn't have any problems with that. All right, now let's take a look at the next problem that we have. All right, so in this problem, the radical is already by itself. You only have a square root. That guy is already on the left side. And so now, we just need to apply the power property to undo that square root. And to undo the square root, we apply a power on both sides that will match the index. So that's going to be a 2. Now, notice what we're doing here. We are raising each side to the power of 2. We're not raising each piece. It's, it's very important, particularly on the, uh, the right side of the equation. When you square this radical, the square and the square root kind of reduce each other away, and we are left with 5x plus 6. Over here, we need to make sure that we remember this special product. We mentioned it when we were talking about completing the square, but when you square a binomial, you don't get just a squared and b squared. You also have a middle term, which is 2 times a times b. And sometimes it's easier to look at it like this, put parentheses around the a and the b. So if you can multiply and get the product for a and b, then you just double it, and that's your middle term. If you don't like that, well, you can always take this a plus b squared and rewrite that as a plus b times a plus b, or whatever your expression is, and then multiply all that out. But a long time ago, my teacher taught me this formula. We did a lot of practice with it, so I know it. So when I square the x, I get x squared. This 2ab, if I multiply x times 2, I get 2x. And then times that 2 is going to give me a 4x in the middle, and then I square the 2 because that's my b, 
and I get four, like that. So once we get rid of the radical, we see that we have something that's quadratic left over. So in order to solve this quadratic equation, I need to get everything to the same side. So this already has a positive coefficient for the x squared. I'm going to move these terms from the left over to the right side. And move the constant as well. And now we have this. 0 equals x squared minus x minus 2. So it's a nice polynomial, nice trinomial. So it should be fairly easy to factor this. The factors of 2 that subtract 1, well, the only factors of 2 are 1 and 2. And that is exactly what we need. So this is x minus 2 times x plus 1. And we finish solving this by using the zero factor theorem. x equals 2 or x equals 1. Negative 1, excuse me. Okay, we've got to stop and think for a moment. Does or, or will each of these be a solution? Well, for us to figure that out, we're going to go up to the side and we're going to do some checking. So let's first check x equals 2. So I'm going to plug that into my original equation, not anything down here always go back to the original. I want to see that if I do the square root of 5 times 2 plus 6, does this equal 2 plus 2? Let's see, that's 10 plus 6, so that gives me the square root of 16, and that's just 4. We can see that 4 does equal 4. That's a true statement. So I've plugged in x equals 2, and I can confirm that it works. Now we've got to check x equals negative 1. Okay, we might get something extraneous, or we might get that it works as well, which means we could have two solutions. So let's check. I need to see if I do 5 times negative 1 plus 6 does this equal negative 1 plus 2? All right, so that's going to give me negative 5 plus 6 is 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. And so, yeah, we can see that the square root of 1 is 1. And everything checks out. So both of these are solutions. Now, it is also possible that only one could work and the other guy is extraneous. And then again, there's the possibility that nobody works, that there are no solutions. So you always need to check against the original equation to see what works and what doesn't work.